Hi, my name is Happiness Demo, and welcome to another English language class. Today we'll be talking about nouns in the theme grammatical accuracy. But before we start our lesson, let's take a look at the objectives for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define nouns, state the features of nouns, and make sentences with nouns. Now let's go to our lesson. When we speak with one another or when we communicate with our friends or our family members, we make use of words, either in writing or in speaking. Now these words are grouped into parts of speech or word classes. And in English grammar, we have eight basic parts of speech. They are the noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and the interjection. These are the eight parts of speech in English grammar. But for today's lesson, we would focus on the noun. What is a noun? Nouns are simply defined as words that refer to the names of people, places, things, animals, and ideas. Words that name people, things, animals, places, or ideas are known as nouns. Now, let's take a look at some nouns in English language. First of all, let's look at people, words that name people. For names of people, we have Habib, Tunde, Amaka, Belema, Barine, Ejiro, and so on and so forth. For places, we have Lagos, school, hospital, restaurant, market, Canada, Port Harcourt. These are names of places. For things, we have book, table, house, computer, handbag, ceiling fan, and so on and so forth. These are names of things. And animals, we have dog, cat, elephant, owl, lion, donkey. These are names of animals. And for ideas, we have fashion, love, happiness, sorrow, hunger, education, technology. These are ideas. Now, note that ideas are not things you can see physically with your eyes. They are not things you can touch, but they are things that exist in the mind or concepts as such. Note that nouns are referred to as naming words because they name people, things, animals, places, and ideas. Now, some other words apart from names of people, places, animals, things, or ideas, some other words apart from people, places, things, animals, or ideas that can also be referred to as nouns include religions, and their followers, organizations, name titles, days of the week, and months of the year. These words are also categorized or grouped as nouns. For example, for religions, we have Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, and so on and so forth. Religions are known as nouns. Religious followers, for example, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist. For organizations, we have St. Forest, Red Cross, Ministry of Education, African Union, and so on and so forth. For name titles, we have Miss, Mr., Doctor, Professor, Mrs., and so on and so forth. For days of the week, we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And then for months of the year, we have January, August, September, December. These words are all nouns, words that refer to religions, religious followers, days of the week, months of the year, and so on and so forth. They are also referred to as nouns. Now we are going to be looking at functions of nouns in sentences or in grammar as a whole. What do nouns do in sentences? What roles do they perform in sentences? The first function of noun we'll be looking at is that nouns function as the subject of sentences. Now, the subject of a sentence refers to 
the person or entity that carries out or performs the actions stated by the verb in a sentence. The person that carries out the action or the thing or the animal that carries out an action in a sentence is referred to as the subject of that sentence. And the subject of a sentence is always a noun. For example, we have Inkechi visited her grandmother over the weekend. Here, Inkechi is the subject of this sentence because Inkechi carries the action of visiting. She visited her grandmother. So Inkechi is a noun. The next sentence says, the neatest student joined the governor on his trip to Calabar. Our noun here is the neatest student because the neatest student carried out the action of joining the governor on his trip to Calabar. And then we have Belema joins the school bus every morning. Belema is the subject of this sentence because Belema carried out the action of joining the school bus or she carries out the action of joining the school bus every morning. So Nkechi, the neatest student, and Belema are the subjects of these sentences and they are nouns. Now, another function of nouns is that they function as the objects of sentences. The object of a sentence is the person or thing that receives the action of the verb. In English grammar, there are two types of objects, the direct object and the indirect object. Now, what is the direct object? The direct object is the noun that the verb refers to. This means that they are directly affected by the verb. To identify the direct object, ask who or what after the verb. The direct object is directly affected by the verb. And a very easy way to identify direct objects is that you would ask who or what the verb refers to. Let's look at some examples that would enable us to understand properly. Jide took Kayode to school yesterday. Now, to identify the direct object in this sentence, you can ask, who did Jide take to school? Who or what did Jide take to school? Jide took Kayode to school yesterday. So Kayode is the direct object of the verb took, and it's a noun. I drank some water. I is the subject of this sentence. Drank is the verb. Now, what is the direct object? What did I drink? I drank some water. So the moment you ask what or who the verb refers to, you would easily identify the direct object of that sentence. Now, the indirect object, on the other hand, is a noun or pronoun that states to whom or for whom the action was done or carried out. Usually, the indirect object receives the direct objects. So, they are called the recipients of the direct object. Now, let's look at some examples to express or to explain this. Adaku gave her eraser to Ngozi. Remember that the indirect object states to whom or for whom the action was done or carried out. And from this example, we see here that Adaku gave her eraser to who? To Ngozi. So this is the indirect object of this sentence. The next sentence says, Mother bought Tejiri a lovely dress. Now we can ask ourselves, for whom did mother buy a lovely dress? Mother bought a lovely dress for Tejiri. So Tejiri is the indirect object of this sentence. The last sentence says, Obomate sent me a parcel on my birthday. To whom was the parcel sent? It was sent to me. So me is the indirect object of this sentence. 
The only thing we have to note is that the indirect object states to whom or for whom an action was done or carried out. Now, another function of nouns is that nouns function as the head of noun phrases. You might want to ask, what is a noun phrase? A noun phrase simply refers to a group of words that is made up of a noun and other words that describe the noun. Anywhere you see a group of words that is made up of or that consists of a noun and other words that describe that noun, the whole expression or the group of words can be referred to as a noun phrase. Now, let's look at some examples of noun phrases and sentences. The tall boy knows how to play basketball. The noun phrase here is the tall boy. Now, remember we said that nouns function as the head of noun phrases. Here, the tall boy is a noun phrase, while the head of the noun phrase is the noun boy. Because you cannot say the tall. The head of a noun phrase simply means that the noun is the most important word in the noun phrase. If you take out the noun, the noun phrase will be incomplete. You cannot say the tall. But when you say the tall boy, the noun phrase is complete. Now we have the adjective here, tall, which describes the boy. So here we see that the noun, boy, is the head of the noun phrase, the tall boy. Secondly, Mother gave me a very beautiful earring yesterday. The noun phrase in this sentence is a very beautiful earring. Here we have a noun, earring, and other words describing the earring. A very beautiful earring. So the noun earring functions as the head of this noun phrase because you cannot say a very beautiful. That will not make complete meaning. So nouns function as the head of noun phrases. Like we said before, nouns play the most important role in a noun phrase. Without the noun, a noun phrase is incomplete. So we refer to it as the head of the noun phrase. Another function of the noun is that nouns function as subject complements and object Compliments. What do we mean by compliments? Compliments refer to words that provide additional information about a noun or a pronoun in a sentence. Compliments describe nouns in sentences. Now, a subject complement is a word that gives more information about a noun in a sentence. It describes something special about the subject or it explains what the subject is. That's why it's called the subject complement. It describes something special about the subject of a sentence. Now let's look at these sentences and identify the subject complements. Mr. Jegede is a teacher. The word teacher here describes who Mr. Jegede is. So teacher is the subject Compliments, because Mr. Jegede is the subject of this sentence. Jollof rice is my favorite food. Favorite food here describes jollof rice, which is the subject of this sentence. So favorite food is the subject complement. Vitamins are important nutrients that we need. Vitamins is the subject of this sentence. And important nutrients describes what vitamins are. So, important nutrients are the subjects. Important nutrients is the subject complement for vitamins. So, subject complements simply describe or say something special about the subject of sentences. A subject complement usually follows a linking verb, such as is, am, are, was, were, smell, feel, taste, look, sound, have, been, did, seem. Now you may want to ask, what are linking verbs? Linking verbs are simply words that link 
or join a subject and its complements. That is the word that describes the subject. A linking verb occurs between a subject and the subject complement. So we find that subject complements usually come after linking verbs in sentences. If you look at the examples we have on the board, is, which is a verb in this sentence, is a linking verb. Is is also a linking verb. And are is also a linking verb. So wherever you find a linking verb, you would most likely find a subject complement after that linking verb, but not in all cases. Apart from being subject complements, nouns also function as object complements. Now, what are object complements? Object complements are those words that occur directly after the objects in sentences. They describe or say something special about the object of a sentence, whether it is the direct object or the indirect object. Object complements describe or say something special about the object of a sentence. Some examples of object complements in sentences are, my teacher made me class captain of my class. Class captain is the object complement for the object, me. Me is the object of this sentence. My teacher is the subject of this sentence. Class captain tells you something about me. My teacher made me the class captain. Class captain describes the object. So it is object complement in this sentence. The principal appointed Opubo's father, PTA chairman. Now, who is the subject of this sentence? The subject is the principal. The object is Opubo's father, while the verb is appointed. The principal appointed who? Opubo's father. Now, what was Opubo's father appointed as? He was appointed as the PTA chairman. PTA chairman gives you additional information about the object, Opubo's father. So we call it the object complement. Olive oil makes my skin smooth and silky. The subject of this sentence is olive oil. The verb is makes. And the object is my skin. Olive oil makes what? My skin. So my skin is the object of this sentence. Now, the words smooth and silky tell you something extra. Tell you something more about the object, which is my skin. So, smooth and silky are the object complements for the object, my skin. Now, note that object complements are different from indirect objects. Indirect objects state to whom or for whom an action is done, while object complements describe the objects. That's the difference between indirect objects and object complements. Indirect objects tell you for whom or to whom an action is done, while object complements describe the objects of the sentence. The last function of nouns we'll look at for today is that nouns modify or describe nouns. Nouns modify or describe other nouns. They do this by describing or giving more information about other nouns in sentences. Now, these nouns that describe other nouns or that give added information about other nouns are known as noun modifiers. Now, let's look at some sentences where there are noun modifiers. The mechanic changed the car battery. Both car and battery are nouns. They are separate nouns. But one noun describes the other. Here we have car battery. The noun car describes the noun battery because it tells you what kind of battery it is. It can be motorcycle battery or generator battery or car battery. So we see the noun car performing the function of an adjective by modifying a noun. And then we have, every home needs to have a fire extinguisher. 
Here also we find two nouns, fire and extinguisher. But one noun describes the other. The noun fire describes the noun extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Then the last sentence we have here says, My mathematics teacher gives me lots of assignments. We also have two nouns here, mathematics and teacher. But mathematics describes the noun teacher because we can also have English teacher, arts teacher, social studies teacher, and so on and so forth. So nouns also explain or describe other nouns or give more information about other nouns. This is where we'll end our lesson today on nouns. But before we go to our test section, let's look at all we have learned today. Today we learned that nouns are words that name people, things, animals, places, and ideas. We also learned that nouns function as the subjects and objects of sentences. We learned that nouns also function as the head of noun phrases. And then we learned that nouns perform the function of subject complements and object complements. And lastly, we saw that nouns modify other nouns in addition to functioning as the object of prepositions. Now let's go to our test section. Our question for today says, what is the function of the noun underlined in the sentence? Miriam got me a storybook as my birthday present. What is the function of the noun storybook? Is it A, subject, B, object, or C, subject complement? The correct answer is B, object. We saw that nouns perform the functions of objects in sentences. And what is an object? An object is simply an entity that is a person or a thing that receives the action of the verb whether directly or indirectly. So we see here that Miriam got me a storybook. What did Miriam get me? She got me a storybook. So storybook is the direct object, while me is the indirect object. So if you picked B, you are correct. This is where we end our lesson today on nouns. Thanks for watching and see you next time.